This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and today we're going to look at Windows Phone 8.1. This is the beta release that's available to developers and to some journalists and uh, pretty much Microsoft's been supplying it on the Nokia Lumia icon which is what we have right here. Of course if you're a developer you can put it on a variety of smartphones. Anyway a lot of good features here. It's starting to bring it up to feature parity with iOS and Android. We're going to look at it now. So here it is. Well, it's still the same in some ways, isn't it? Windows Phone 8.1. We have the live tile UI, the nice fan responsive kind of thing going on here. But that's good stuff. That's staying. Good times there. One thing that I really, really like, notifications. See the little symbols up here? We have more things we, telling us what's going on here, a battery, messaging, you know. And if you swipe down, look at all that stuff. Good times. Very easy. So quick settings right available there. Your email. Anything else that's important, calendar stuff, missed calls will be here. Now, before we just had toast notifications, they'd show up briefly at the top and then they would be gone. So if you didn't look quickly enough, you were kind of out of luck. Now, I know some of you really like the live tile notifications and updates. And if an application actually offers those, well, that's great. Not all of them do. But the problem is, especially with these full HD displays or even more tiles, it's kind of like competing billboards. And after all, I find I kind of actually tune out all of these little blinking, moving, smiley little tiles here. So good old fashioned notifications up top for the win. Probably the thing that has gotten the most attention and a lot of you are most interested in this competes with Siri on the iPhone and Google's excellent voice control. We have Microsoft's voice assistant and she's more than just a voice assistant and she's called Cortana. Now some of my techie friends tell me there's a uh, popular porn star by that name. Now that's not my area of expertise. I can't tell you if that's true, but I hear it's not safe for work to search for images of Cortana. Honestly, who is Cortana really? She was the AI assistant in Halo. And well, she herself is not so safe for work if you look, if you look at pictures of her. But anyway, very capable, has a sense of humor. I think they're really going after Siri there to make it seem more like somebody who's human and interactive. And that's part of the reason why she's called Cortana. Give her some kind of name, name of an AI instead of voice control. You know, it's more personable right away. So if you hit the search button, first you see, now this, this is interesting and people are going to freak out ever since the NSA. And Cortana wants to use all sorts of information about that you have stored in your device and about you, including your location, your text messages, history of what you've been up to. But that's really so she can give you more relevant information. If you get what I mean, like if you have an appointment coming up, she might say, oh, there's a relevant email message with that person they have listed in that appointment. So it is very helpful. And let's face it, our information is screwed. It's not private anymore. You might as well enable it and let Cortana do her thing to her best extreme. So let's ask her a question. Who is Cortana? Sorry. The internet and I aren't talking right now. Well, it looks like we just lost our data connection. See what I mean? She has a sense of humor there. We'll, we'll check our internet connection and give that a try again. All right. I, I think uh, the interwebs on the phone are now copacetic, so we're going to give this another try. Who is Cortana? And there we have Wikipedia entry and so on, so that works just fine. And for those of you who have not seen the lovely Cortana, there she is in her vague blueness and her scantily clad body. So it works pretty well and there's more practical things. You can ask it what your next appointment is, so on, uh, set, set timers, all the usual things you can do with a voice assistant. The voice recognition works quite well in this. Now Windows Phone had voice recognition before, it just didn't have all the fancy things that could pull in all sorts of related info and things that you do frequently to kind of improve on it. And well, she didn't have quite the sense of humor that she does now too. So very good job, uh, uh, very good competitors certainly to Siri and to Google voice commands too. A couple of other good features are Burst mode for the camera, that's the stock Windows phone camera. If you have a Nokia phone, you're probably using the Nokia camera anyway. Also, support for Miracast, which is the uh, replacement for wide eye wireless display. That's pretty cool too. All sorts of changes to Wi Fi as well. And in the beta, this made our Wi Fi a little flaky, which is why Cortana was having trouble talking to the internet. So we'll take a look at this. And we have Wi Fi Sense now. So it can do things like share Wi Fi networks with your friends, it can remember. And hotspots, it can automatically accept consent agreements. Let's turn this stuff on. Provide a e name, email, or phone number when required. You know how some hotspots ask that of you. Now you don't have to turn that on, so and there's your accept terms of service for 
Wi-Fi hotspots. There's also more granular management of your battery. For example, we have battery saver here now, so we can find out how long it thinks that I'm going to be able to run this phone, and we can see by swiping sideways what's been using the most battery. And then we also have data sense, so it can help keep track of what you're doing with your data as well. So again, a whole lot of fine tuning, a lot of things that we would like to see on a mature ecosystem finally here. Hubs have gone away, no more hubs. Instead, really, we're just focusing on Xbox music, Xbox video. So Microsoft said, you know, nobody really cared for the hubs and trying to aggregate that way. That doesn't mean you don't get music, you don't get video. Like I said, we do have Xbox music and Xbox video still here. Now, somebody just called music. Same stuff, you know, and love. It's always been a pretty pleasant presentation right there. With the usual window style listing here. So that works the same. And of course, you have the video player as well. Just the hub concept is gone from those. The people hub is still the people hub. So you, you have things like your phone contacts right there. Not many on this phone. Your social networking, you get Twitter, Facebook, all that sort of stuff. So that's a good place for hubs to stay put, and in fact it did. The App Store can now automatically update apps, and you can set it to only do that over Wi-Fi, which I think most of us would prefer, so we don't waste our cellular data updating, say, the latest version of Halo Mobile that's available for this product. Google Calendar support for the calendar. Let's take a look at the calendar, because they've done some nice visual changes right there. So new presentation, and if you give it consent to your location, you'll also get weather over here, which is pretty cool. New view, we got the week view going on over here, and again, Google Calendar syncing support, so that's nice. For those of you who have a phone with a micro SD card slot, and it's still not the most common thing on Windows Phone, but if you do, you can actually put your app and game data on there, and you can have that stuff get backed up to your OneDrive account. That's the new name for SkyDrive, so all good stuff, all getting a little bit more cloud-based, very competitive again with Android and iOS in that respect. IE 11, the latest update of IE right here, can do things like save your passwords if you wish it to do so for websites. You don't have to type them in every single time. And check out the keyboard finally. I know some of you really love swipe style keyboards. And notice if I start dragging around, we got a swipe style keyboard if you prefer. Now goodness knows what it's going to think I'm doing because I was just randomly swiping, but you get the idea there. Let's try for something more normal. Yep, that's what I was swiping. And then there's the autocomplete guessing I might want WhatsApp. We also get quiet hours on the phone. Thank God. So you can have it not ring, beep, and buzz in the middle of the night when you're trying to get some sleep. So again, all of these features really are just making this more mature, more competitive with iOS and Android. Now, both of those operating systems, when they came out, they were missing a lot of stuff too, and it gradually got added over time. But now that there are two such strong mobile ecosystems available, it was tough for Windows Phone as the, the newcomer to really be lacking a lot of features. And it took Microsoft some time to get here, but I think at this point we're looking at a very feature complete mature phone. I'd still like to see more apps in the App Store. Like I said, a lot of the staples are there. You've got your weather apps, you've got your news apps. Um, the core things are there at this point. Things like games, the popular games, not so much. Say you're addicted to Heyday. You got that for Android and iOS. You do not have that for Windows Phone still. You got Xbox games on here and some of them are quite good, but a lot of the headliners that come out for Android and iOS still are not on Windows Phone. And that can be a little bit of a hurt, even if Xbox games are enjoyable. So that's Windows Phone 8.1 Beta. Can't wait till it's available for all you guys too because it brings a lot of really good changes. Some things that were obvious deficiencies in this day and age with mature ecosystems available, that really hurts. Nice, nice improvements here. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website, Reviews of Windows Phone Devices, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.